Hello everyone and welcome to the Zero K Grand Finale 2018 Tournament. I'm your host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and we are going to be starting out pretty shortly. It is a 1v1 tournament with, I believe, 16 players. Double check that the brackets got updated. But it is going to be, yeah, there we go. <clears throat> Alright, so we have a lot of people playing. A lot of people playing. It's actually going to be a, at this point, looks like 17 player tournament. So, I'm really excited because we don't really see a lot of tournaments this big in 0k, which, I mean, it might be because we haven't seen a lot of tournaments that are just straight up 1v1. Like, single elimination, best of three, 1v1. That is how this tournament is going. I guess we'll do Kingstad versus Google Frog. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world. I think next time I will start five minutes late, though, just because it seems like that is a thing that comes up. I gotta be careful about that. The way that the tournament works is that there are... It's best of three, single elimination. The first map is going to be... is going to be fixed for every round. I think for this one, it's going to be Thornford Crossing, but... I'm not entirely sure because there are a lot of people in the tournament right now. Let's see. Yeah, I'm guessing there will be a shift. It might be Aquatic Divide, which... That can't be right. Or at least I hope not, because I don't like that map. But, yeah, I think it will be... It'll be a different map that's not in the, tur in the tournament thread. And then after that, there's a second match where there's some, there's a list of maps that you can play in the second match, and then li another list that's totally separate for the third match. So every set of matches is going to be picking from three different pools. Each pool is going to be is going to be a different set of maps, and then that. So the thing is that between each set of games, there'll be similarities between maps chosen, but between each round in a set, there'll be a totally different set of maps. Which is a neat little idea. Alright, okay, never mind. We're gonna be switching over to Wesley versus Dyth. So, sorry, Kingston, Google Frog, I'm gonna be switching over what I cast, because if Google Frog is having technical problems, then I'm not gonna wait. So we're gonna be doing Wesley versus Dyth. Both pretty good players. I've been casting fair amount of the games recently, just as exhibition matches. And I'm curious how that's going to play out here, because they are... They are players who... Like I said, I've seen them play well. And I've seen them play each other a little... I think a little bit. But not as much as I would like to. So I'm really curious how this is going to pan out. So again, we are on Thornford. We have... Like, it is a very... Very flat map. Flat map, some hills. Moderately famine -y. Like, there's metal. Like, there's, like, 8 metal per spot. Looks like you could probably get about 25 metal without having to contest too much. But overall, this is going to be... Oh, it's going to be interesting, because there's not a whole lot of deep water. So I don't expect necessarily a lot of ants or anything, but I could see amph bot working reasonably well just because of the fact that there's a lot of shallows. At the same time, with the nerfs Amph's gotten recently, especially to archers, I kind of doubt it. And it looks like we are actually seeing Wesley go for Spiderbot and Dith go for Hovercrafts. Interesting. I haven't seen a huge amount of Hovercraft use recently just because Hovercraft has not really been... I don't know, it just hasn't really been a factor that people seem to think works really well. It is a bit of a tricky factory. You do have to worry about how to make your daggers work best. And I'm curious if they're going to be playing with that too much. You do indeed have, we do indeed have a few daggers come out from Dith or Dyth. Same time, Wesley going for lots of fleas because that is how you play zero K these days. Is all the fleas in the world? Actually, I was noticing there was some chat in the in the dev chat room what, about whether or not fleas would even be a thing to happen. So the thing is that when fleas are a thing. Like, fleas were a thing. Fleas were a really strong thing. People were playing with fleas all the time. And then, apparently, people just sort of stopped playing fleas. I didn't really notice too much because, I mean, the replays I was casting, I didn't see it when I was playing quick matches. I wasn't usually quick matching against a lot of people who were using fleas all that much. 
So it was hard for me to tell, but it sounds like people just stopped playing on maps that made fleas work. But now we have a map that apparently, at least as far as Wesley's concerned, fleas will work on. And against Hovercraft, I actually do agree because the daggers, they are fast, they can help deal with the fleas, but they don't have a huge amount of damage. This line splash might get lucky. If they do, then yeah, the daggers can get rid of a bunch of fleas. But otherwise, the fleas are just fighting the daggers and they'll be fine. On the other hand, with the mace coming up here and being built as quickly as possible, that should get rid of the flea threat pretty quick. That being said, the biggest thing fleas have always had, regardless of their current strength, is the fact that they are basically free scouts. I mean, Wes can just set them off everywhere, and then they have perfect information. They know exactly what's happening. Of course, the one thing is that the way the water is right now, it's not quite... Like, Dyth can escape more or less. This, this dagger is off to the side. Can't really be touched, so it does sort of work. Also, is that, like, an effect on the underwater? Oh, it is. Okay. So I was like, that is some really beautiful caustics, and then I realized, no, it's actually just a texture on the actual water surface. That is a really neat trick to make beautiful looking caustics. Anyway, are we just seeing, no, we're just seeing fleas. Wesley apparently thinking that fleas are going to be the way to go, which I totally disagree with, because of course their opponent, I mean, they have the mace. I, looks like they've seen the mace too. No. I saw some flea corpses around here, but no. Apparently the mace has not been spotted yet. But again, it's like this this mace is going to destroy the fleas. Without question. There's no way the fleas can do anything about it. It's one thing fleas the one thing fleas have is that they are very quick and they do deal a lot of damage. The downside with fleas is that when you actually get them near something like a lotus or any kind of beam laser, really, they die immediately because they can't dodge it and they don't deal enough damage to make up for the fact that they're getting killed as quickly as they are. So right there. Actually, mace took a lot of damage, but uh, the cost of a lot of fleas. 400 fleas, that's that's 20 fleas. Might be able to take out the mace, but I... Eh, it'd be, it'd be close. I would seriously doubt it. Regardless, though, we do have Requises coming up, so that makes sense. Got the Requises up, but that gives Dice a fair bit of space to play with. I mean, the fleas are still around here. Wesley can, see, can still see, hey, something's going on, but they can't see a huge amount. Like, they can see a few metal extractors. That's good. That's what you want fleas for. But the fleas cannot be used as an offensive force. So, yeah, Mace did its job. Dyth can get some space to breathe. They can get some space to build up. Get a bit of a Halberd Scalpel army going. And that will be a great thing to use later on. Because, I mean, Wesley has been compensating for the lack of real frontline forces with a bunch of Lotuses. And Halberds basically get rid of those. So, overall, Dyth is, I'd say, in a very strong position to keep going in this match. I don't think it's necessarily a bad matchup. I just think that Dyth is in a position right now where they've read the fact that fleas are going to be used a lot. They've answered that. They really don't have to worry about it too much. And now, all that really gives Wesley time to do is build up, I guess, like, Hermit Venom. Maybe the only thing I can think of that would actually work. But on the other hand, one of the maces is dead. We do have, like I said, Halberd Scalpel coming in, though, and that will help against Fleas, but not as much. I think, actually, at this point, the Fleas might be... might be kind of done. Oh, not done, sorry. The Fleas might be able to get rid of Dyth quite a bit. Dyth might be done, I should say. Unless another mace comes in, and I imagine there will be fairly soon, but... Hard to say. I mean, this Quill here is basically dead. And with the other Fleas coming in, I mean, the Scalpel's gonna try to help. They can get rid of one or two, but they don't have the reload time to really deal with this. These Fleas, again, showing their power... And, I mean, one more maze would do the trick. It's just make sure to have a few maces with the army. The 400 metal for saving your entire army and construction and everything else. That is still worthwhile, but since Wesley broke that mace, there really isn't anything stopping them. And there is another mace here, but it's nowhere near the fleas. The fleas are able to just have a field day. There's, there is nothing stopping them here right now. A lot of attempts to try, but nothing that's really working out. Dyth right now with half the economy of Wesley, just thanks to the fleas. Like, thanks to harassing that, thanks to getting rid of this quill over here, because this this entire area would have been expanded to. Dyth would have had 23, 24 metal per second if they had managed to get that quill over here and build up. But nope. So at this point, yeah, Dyth can't even really easily build another mace. That take 40 seconds to do any mace. Clearly much more worried about getting the halberds up. Probably worried about getting some of these expansions destroyed. But even then, I'm not quite sure how effective that'll be. We'll find out right now, though. The halberds are coming in the back of the base, getting rid of one of the welders... Probably going to be able to get rid of some of the metal extractors too, but on the other hand, that redback is being a major hassle. Two metal extractors are down. Wesley down to about 15 metal per second. That's fairly even, actually. That was some really good rating for Dyth. 
There is a there is some reclaim inside the base, but it's not going to be quite enough to make a huge difference. 500 metal per sec or 500 metal, 10 seconds. Yeah, it's like a minute and a half of Wesley being kind of close to Dyth. But at the same time, Dyth should be able to rebuild. They do have some. They have lotuses up. They need those lotuses. The thing about ma fleas, like I said before, beam lasers beat fleas. So you get a lotus up, the fleas have no chance whatsoever. Good thinking on Dyth's part. Although I kind of wish he'd, they had thrown up some lotuses beforehand, because at this point Dyth is still a fair bit behind. If you look at look at the stats for metal used, Dyth is behind by about 500 metal, and in terms of oh, in terms of attrition, Wesley's ahead by 700. So army value overall, yeah, Wesley's up by about a thousand army value. And considering how much of their army is fleas, like that's actually saying something. Like that this is most of the army value right here. Like, yeah, there's a lot of fleas, but fleas are 20 metal each. They don't contribute much to this number. So overall, Wesley is in a very strong position economically and militarily. The only real downside for them right now would be that they don't have a huge amount of speed. Which they don't, but it almost doesn't matter because they're clearly going for a bit of a slow push. I mean, they're gradually building up over to the south side of the map, making sure nothing can really break into the cove. They're slowly making sure that there's nothing blocking their path to expanding further on. Setting up a lot of defenses to make sure their expansions are strong. Now, Halberds will be able to come in here and stop the Lotuses from doing much. But at the same time, it's not like Wesley is being completely passive here. Four Recluses coming over the cliff. I don't think Dice is even aware. No, they would have been aware of them coming up, but they're not aware of their current position. Probably aware that they are on the mountains. But at this point... Bit of a trick. I mean, one of the welders or the weavers rather do go down. This expansion is destroyed, but at the cost of four halberds, that's that's almost a thousand metal from Dice, who has been behind quite a bit for most of this round. That being said, it did succeed. Wesley lost the expansion. They basically got one halberd in the process. Those halberds could easily get out of the position. At the same time, Rex is coming into Dice's base. Unfortunately, way too close to the maze to be able to do anything on top of the lance coming in here. So these recklesses unable to do anything at all to slow down Dice's progress. At the same time, another flea over to the north side of the map, or same flea, rather, over to the north side of the map, not being stopped, destroying this quill. Probably the thing that'll take it out is the fact that the quill's death explosion... No, quill's death explosion is not going to be enough. If the flea doesn't move, it will die to the... No, it's going to die to the mechs. The one thing that'll kill the flea is the very accomplishment of its own goals. And from there, it'll get an own goal, blowing itself to pieces off the, me me mech off the mech's death explosion. But that's fine. Dyth right now, they even up the attrition, they actually got slightly ahead... In terms of army value, Dyth is now only about 600 metal behind. And that's not much. Like, Dyth could easily equalize that by a good shot, or good set of engagements. Not sure where the Halberds are planning on going next, though, because Wesley, they're focusing almost a lot more on overdrive than on actual expansion for expanding. They are rebuilding the western expansion, but the southeast has not been claimed at all. Looks like Wesley is gradually making their way over there. How much of an effect is going to have, though? I don't know. At the same time, Wesley making sure that Dyth has not expanded over to the eastern side of the map. And if we check what Wes knows radar-wise, Wes is actually really, really lacking radar. They're relying entirely on Weaver radar, and this map is a little bit big for that. At the same time, Dyth, they know what's going on on the north side of the map, but otherwise they're a little bit in the dark. So I'm not sure where they are, like, the sheer army bearing down on their forces. Because this north expansion is done. This eastern force is actually in a reasonably okay spot, but the recluses could be a problem, especially for that lance. If the recluses stay on the mountain, that lance, they've got to be, they can't move the lance anywhere near this hill. If Dyth moves the lance anywhere near here, it's, it's over. And the thing is, this hill is very safe. I mean, it's, we're talking about spider against vehicles. So it's not like the vehicles can really go up the hill. They can kind of do some damage and they can definitely avoid the hill, but that's it. Or the Lance could actually get in range and start firing at them, and it's just by virtue of the fact that they're on a hill and therefore horizontal and therefore able to dodge in all directions that things actually work. Because, wow, that was... that was kind of scary. At the same time, though, the Lance on reload is going to go down to the Bombers. Raven takes out the Lance right before it's able to fire off a shot, too. Very close, but it does work out, and there are no further Lances coming up, or at least none that are on the table. At the same time... That's a lot of forces for Wesley, but a lot of those forces are completely split up. So it's not clear where those forces are going to actually go when it comes to defending the base, because right now, Dyth looks like they have a really good spot, a really good shot at getting 
a lot of damage in here. At the same time, Wesley could go for a counter attack, possibly type of base trade. And I think Wesley in their main base right now is actually doing okay. Focusing primarily on getting Ravens, which are having a tough time getting through the maces. But if those recklesses, if the recklesses manage to find purchase on the maces, then we could see the Ravens come in here and destroy them, like destroy the rest of the forces, I should say. And recklesses do basically beat maces. And yeah, there we go. The Ravens coming in here, finishing out the maces. There's not much Dice has left. This is this is it. This is Dice's last ditch attempt. And at the same time, there is an attack going over in Wesley's base, and that. That's it. That's all is needed. Wesley wins the first round, but again, this is best of three. So we're going to be moving on to game two. It'll be Dyth's choice of map. And again, that's from, that is from a fairly limited list. I'm not sure what they're going to go for. In this case, it felt like Dyth had a bit of a hard time dealing with fleas. Like, not really sure what to do when dealing with fleas. So we'll probably see a larger map, a flatter map. Of the maps that are available, I'm guessing we'll probably see... Intersection, honestly. Maybe Iceland. Maybe, maybe Gekka Wild. Those maps aren't really great for spiders. They Obviously, they work fine for spiders. It's just they're not spider maps. A lot of the other maps in the list, like Adansonia are Ravaged, those maps are amazing for spiders. And even some of like Trojan Hillers or Bandit Plains, those are still really good for spiders. So I expect we'll be seeing something a little on the small side. Probably Intersection, honestly. I think Intersection is going to be the way that Dyth chooses to take this. We'll find out in a sec, because... I mean, obviously, I have to actually deal with that. So, let's see. Dyth! Yep, Intersection! Called it! I was exactly right. Dyth going for the Intersection. That is... Yeah, right here. So we got an intersection for game two. And that is... That's probably going to be, you know, vehicle versus vehicle. Clearly, Dyth was comfortable with just standard vehicle play, macro play, expanding a lot. They weren't as comfortable being harassed by fleas or dealing with harassment in general. So I expect intersection. We won't see spider built up. I mean, we might. I don't know. For all we know, West just goes, hey, you know what? I can just build spider. I can build spider, I can go with spider, I can make spider work. I don't care if it's intersection. We're going mass fleas. Because mass fleas worked. Oh, Zach, ladder? You mean brackets? Okay, Zach, if you're looking for the brackets, I'll put them in the chat right now. If you're looking for ladder, then yeah, look at the site. But I'm guessing you mean brackets. Alright, so... Oh, wait. I didn't want to have this in the actual thing. Oh, well. Stream intermission music has changed. For those of you watching on YouTube, the stream intermission music has changed. I'm not using just standard 0K stuff. I'm using some OC Remix stuff that's really fun and jazzy. But in-game music for the game itself. Those of you who have been watching my streams will know that I've been doing stuff with... with different music for playing the game as well. Not for tournaments. Or cast in general. Cast don't get that. Alright, into the game itself. So, Wes going in with rovers. No, nothing too out of the ordinary. And Dyth going in with tanks. Again, nothing really out of the ordinary. Tanks have been reasonably popular lately since Kodachi's got changed. But I think at this point everyone's learned how to deal with tanks. So, I'm expecting we're going to see a few early Kodachis probably move on from there to Blitz pretty fast. If not, just straight to Ogre. Depending on what exactly Wesley does. Right now, Wesley going for the fairly standard start. Scorcher, Dart, Mason. Just nothing out, nothing too unusual. Scorcher, Dart is the way to go with Light Vehicles early game. That's just what you do. I mean, if you're dealing with stuff that's really difficult, like a lot of small forces, maybe good to get some Rippers... A lot of heavier forces may be good to get some Ravagers early, but nah, Scorcher Dart, as a rule, is the way to start out with light vehicles. I'm a little curious what Dyth is planning on doing after this Welder, though. Like, what are their plans for building units? Because I don't expect they're going to be going for pure Kodachi. I kind of expect Ogres pretty quick. Once they realize their opponent is going hard on the, the Scorcher Dart, Ogres just make the most sense to me. 
But I don't know, because ogres are also a little bit awkward. Like, they're slow, they have a hard time really exerting pressure on a map. Granted, Intersection is a fairly small map, so it's not hard for Dyke to actually put that pressure out there. I'm just not sure exactly if they're going to plan to do that, because, well, this is still a map that you want to make sure you have good mobility on. On the other hand, Kodachi getting in here, getting killed, but doing a lot of damage, getting rid of several wind generators and a metal extractor, that pushes Wesley way behind Dyth in terms of economy. Dyth has a quite healthy economy in their main base. They're pretty much untouchable by Scorchers right now. And they have more Kodachis. Okay, Kodachi Blitz Ogre. So yeah, nothing unusual there. They are getting the Ogre about as early as I would have expected, considering the Scorcher Dart is the way that Wesley is clearly going. I mean, I don't expect Wesley's going to switch off to anything else until probably mid-game. They might switch off to Fencers if they start seeing Ogres come in. But part of me thinks they're just going to go just Scorcher Dart and try to outnumber the Ogre. Just overwhelm it that way. Because only one Ogre, you can kind of do that. I mean, the numbers that often they get... Ooh, oh, that Scorcher got lucky. Good kill on the Kodachi, by the way, too. That completely, that's complete value. Like, Wesley is doing a fine job early game for the Attrition. Unfortunately, because they're playing against tanks, it's hard to raid because the Welder does have a damage... I mean, not much of a damaging weapon. That's still 45 DPS for Scorcher. That's a lot. That being said, Wesley, I don't think they're aware... No, they're not aware of anything being built up yet. They do have a Scorcher coming in to double-check. Are there Welders here? And the answer is yes! And the Scorchers doesn't want anything to do with that because, of course, the Welder is building up a Lotus. It's not going to be in time. Like, that Scorcher will not be able to succeed getting rid of that Welder. That's the thing with tanks. You just can't really raid without putting some commitment into it. And at this point, it's clear that Dice is more concerned about getting territory than they are about wiping out... Sorry, Wesley's more concerned about getting territory than they are about wiping out Dice's economy. Because Dice's economy, it's behind Wesley right now. Wesley's been doing a good job making sure that a lot of the units that Dice use have been wasted. I mean, really, just generally being efficient. So that's actually worked out remarkably well. And again, even more efficiency. What is Wesley's unit loss value right now? Wesley has lost 350 metal compared to Dyth losing 780. Which, uh, yeah, okay. I don't need to go in the graphs for that now that I think about it. But I meant more like general over time. Yeah, army value. That is actually the difference between army value between the two players right now. The economy is not providing the difference. The entire difference is that Dyth is losing units. They're throwing out Kodachis and Blitzes in ones against a force that basically counters them, or at least in enough, that has enough numbers that does not care. But honestly, kind of counters them. Like, Blitzes, they'll get rid of the Darth's no problem. But now the Ogre, that's the real test. And, oh, Wesley, are going to react to this? Yes! Wesley does react to this in time. Does not, however, get rid of the Ogre because it's an Ogre. Yeah, that's what it does. It's supposed to do that. So are we going to see Fencers? Are we going to see rip Ravagers? Are we going to see Rippers just go for Riot versus Riot? I mean, Rippers wouldn't be the terrible, the worst idea, because the thing is that... No, not Rippers, sorry. I mean... No, I mean Rippers, yeah, because Fencers... They're going to go for stuff that will counter the Fencers. But no, it looks like actually Fencers would be a good idea. Dyth is not thinking, oh, what do I do when my opponent builds a counter? How do I counter the counter? They're getting a Minotaur, and the Minotaur would be countered by Fencers. Or at least would be partially dealt with by Fencers. So yeah, that's definitely a way that can go. And that's not a bad thing, either. Yeah, Ketabor pointing out Fencers, Ravagers, Dominatrices. I guess Rippers wouldn't be the best option. You got, you got a point. Rippers don't really have the range to deal with it. I just think it'd be kind of interesting as sort of a thinking ahead thing, but yeah, straightforward responses. Ravagers have the HP, Dominatrices just take them over, and Fencers have the range. That being said, what Wes has, though, Wes has territory. Like I said earlier, Wesley's playing this game for the territory. They're not playing the game to try to kill off Dyth's e economy. They're trying to play the game to make sure Dyth never gets that economy in the first place. And doing a reasonably good job of that. Wesley right now, with a fairly large advantage, unfortunately, not a whole lot of caretakers in the main base. Looks like they're going to be building up a second factory, too. These caretakers are way behind where they need to be. I mean, they're technically close enough to actually, I think they're close enough to assist the factory. But this really looks like it's meant to be used as a second factory. Like, probably going to build a second factory right here. Airplanes, most likely. Get a bunch of ravens again. I mean, at this point, Dyth is still far behind. Even with Wesley not building as much as they could. Dyth is still a fair bit behind. Though, that being said, Dyth now with the production coming in here and Wesley still accessing. I mean, Wesley's, Wesley's excesses right now. 680 to 432 from Dyth. 
So yeah, Wesley is actually accessed beyond what the army value is. The Wesley's army value difference, could you imagine if that was not accessed? Wesley's army value would be twice what it is now if there wasn't accessing. And Dominatrix is going to be the response, as well as Rippers. I guess Dominatrix Ripper just Ripper there just in case more Kodachis and Blitzes come in as a way of dealing with them, but... Okay, makes sense. I mean, I, I mentioned Rippers, so we're seeing Rippers. I was not wrong. I mean, Ketabor, I, I agree with Ketabor that it is definitely Dominatrix, or Dominatrix Ravager and Fencer are the responses, but Dominatrix Ripper, I like... I'm just trying to think if Ripper is really that great against against any of the raiders that come out from the tank factory. I mean, it's okay, but you always need three or four rippers to actually have anything useful for actual anti-raider play. That being said, Wesley just raiding out, making sure that Dyth cannot really expand. Ogre here as well, but it's not going to be enough. If Wesley micros this properly, the, the stuff can get away. Well, no, it's not going to get away. I say these units could get away, but no, they've chosen to commit suicide instead, rather than, you know, running. Like, going backwards. Granted, vehicles, it's a little harder to do that. I think the darts could have gotten away. They could have just gone due north and been fine. But that's fine, though. Wesley's still way ahead in economy. They're finally... They got the caretakers up. They are building up what they need. So, their metal's being used. They're building up everything. They got that second factory. There's the airplane plant. At this point, it's just a matter of when Wesley decides to build up some ravens and just bomb out Dyth. Once they've gotten rid of Dyth's forces, well, there's not much more to be said. Especially the Dominatrix right there. I mean, it takes a little while for the Dominatrix to fight the Minotaur and take it. So, there is a chance of it being destroyed in the process. But that being said, it's still not something I'm likely to see. Like, I, I don't think the Dominatrix is going to be able to get in there and really take it out. Not, not right now. And it looks like it's not even going for it. What does Wesley know? They should have radar... No, they don't have radar... They don't have radar up front. Oh, they do have it now. They didn't have radar up front. Now they do. Now they know where things are. And it looks like the Dominatrix is going over to try to take over the Welder, of which there are two. One of which was just built, so that's good for Dyth because they're looking to lose a Welder pretty soon. Certainly just lost a Lotus, they can't really expand over the north side of the map. I'm a little curious if Dyth is thinking about going for something other than pure tank. Nope! Going in! Going to the Minotaurs, getting them hurt by the... By the by the Stingers and hoping the Emissary does this job to get rid of the Stingers. I mean, it's not a bad idea, considering how much of a siege this is. But Wesley's getting those Ravens up. And those Ravens are coming in. And those Ravens are going to be doing a fair bit of damage. If they get rid of the Ogre or get rid of the Emissary... Yeah, the Emissary. That is the option. And that's the Emissary down. I mean, Ogre, Flex AA, getting rid of one of the Ravens... Ooh! <laughs> Only one of the Ravens goes down. And it goes down into Wesley's territory, so reclaiming that won't be a problem. But still, that's gotta hurt. Anyway, right, Wesley right now, all they really need is an air pad, and they can just start going. Like, wipe out a bunch of this army. Already in the main base, we have the Dominatrix Ripper combo coming up here. I don't really know if anything's gonna actually stop it. I mean, first thing Dominic's gonna grab is gonna be well, either the, the Welder or possibly the Radar. Nope, get those Lotuses. Get all of the Lotuses. Heck, at this point, just Dominatrix the economy. Don't even kill it. Just, yeah, just take it over. Yeah, this is it. Wesley winning with Mass Dominatrix into Dyth's base. 2-0, Wesley advances. Yeah, I mean, Wesley, I mean, some excess early on and a little bit of trouble going in, but ultimately, Wesley just took all the territory. They just grabbed everything. Right off the bat, Wesley took everything that was on the table, everything that was available, went to them. And now at this point, that means there's not much left. So, yeah, Wes takes it. Dyth is going to be eliminated from the tournament, and Wesley moves on. So, that means they're going to be fighting the winner of 400 Ain Steel Blue. Not sure who that is right now. I think it's probably halfway through. I'm a little curious what we have going in because right now what do we have for matches Barn and Steel Blue are on what looks like game two okay eh
All right, so my apologies for the bottom not really showing the map properly. I need some to update that. I need some to update that. So yeah, we have looking at the brackets though. We do have Golda taking a win against FFC. Wesley beat Dife. We're going on to the next match of 400 and Steel Blue. So this was game two. I don't know who won. I asked who won game one, but I didn't actually check the answer. Bit of a mistake there. Maybe I should check that after once we load in. Because I'm not really sure. Because the thing is that whoever, obviously it's this game two, so whoever won game one, if they win. 1-0 in favor of Steel Blue. Thank you. Alright, so. Steel Blue is going in with Jump Bot Factory. 400, I'm kind of expecting to go in with Spider Factory, but honestly, I have no idea. Sorry for those with music. It, I broke it. My bad. Yeah, so we have... Who's coming in next? Oh, Spider Factory. Spider Factory for 400. No surprises there. Oops. So 400 going in again for mass fleas. Oh no, flea and a redback. Okay, that's a bit new. I don't usually see that. Steel Blue on the other hand, again, jump bots... Mass Constable, because why not? They deal damage. Not much damage, mind you, but they deal damage, so... Hey, they can kind of defend themselves. Especially when you deal with Fleas. I think that might be what Steel Blue is thinking. They've got Fleas that they're going to likely deal with, because they're unravaged. And... That means there's... Yeah, not much else here. So, Steel Blue and 400... What are you... Or rather, Steel Blue, what are you going to do here? Other than, you know, have a bunch of builders and just have a bunch of builders. I mean, it looks like Steel Blue is probably going to be getting Hyros afterwards, but... I don't know. Like, the main base is clearly taken care of. That's well defended enough. But 400 is in a position where they have Redbacks, and... Against Jump Bots, I'm not really sure that's a great thing to have. I mean, really, Recklessness is what I'd go for with Jump Bots. Oh, yeah, Ketabur. I think Okay, I think two Constables, I like the idea. On Ravaged, I can kind of see why you'd build more, because it is such a jump-heavy map. I can kind of see where it works, or rather than a jump-heavy map, it's such a spider-heavy map. So you kind of want to expand in multiple directions, have the Constables around to help deal with the fleas. But I'm curious when we're going to see Pyros. Because thus far, we haven't. Steel Blue going purely on these, on these Constables. I mean... They deal damage, which is nice, but that's not the best thing in the world. Also, Steel Blue, really desperately needing a lot of power. Going for an extra Lotus as well, just in case. Just to make sure that they don't have any flea trouble. And really, that is that is saying a lot. At this point, three Lotuses in the main base for Steel Blue. They're, they're actually getting kind of desperate on power. Like, they're going to need to build up a lot of wind generators to get the power back up. Because at this point, Steel Blue is running dangerously close to excess. 400, on the other hand... They're having no problem spending their money. Like, they have the expansion going. They have a bunch of wind generators. They don't really have to worry about stuff coming up. At this point, 400 is really quite prepared for whatever happens. And Steel Blue is getting worried. We didn't get to see game one of this series, but I'm guessing in game one there were a lot of fleas. Just considering how much 400 doesn't have to do anything and Steel Blue is mass building lotuses. You don't mass build lotuses unless you're worried about fleas. I mean, okay, Catabor, no flea harass because they don't have to. Clearly, the conditioning happened in game one. Right, clearly, Steel Blue is quite concerned about fleas as it is. Though, granted, the fleas, if they do try to harass now, they will do nothing because, again, Lotuses are already in place. I think we'll be able to get rid of a couple these two wind generators, maybe. But no, Steel Blue not even going for it. it does get rid of radar, though. It's not bad. At this point, that. Steel Blue has nothing to see. 400, good job. But yeah, again, the Fleas not going to be able to really get rid of anything thanks to the Lotuses, so... I mean, 400, they conditioned Steel Blue well, but Steel Blue... 
they do have the proper defenses. Like, it, yeah, they were conditioned, but Steel Blue has the proper defenses. 400 can't really raid them. Not without getting careless, but still. 400 can't really do anything. All these con all these constables coming in here will be able to stop the fleas, or at least some of them. It'll help. Nothing else. Won't be able to get help get that lotus up, but once the fleas go away, then yeah, it'll be that'll be it. Although that being said, the redback coming in here not gonna be so easy to get rid of. Not to mention the constables really don't have a position to actually work from. So right now, yeah, they're forced to escape. This just isn't going to happen. This expansion is not happening. And 400 right now pretty much got the entire eastern side of the map. And a lot of the western side of the map. And Steel Blue can't really expand. I'm sure they'd love to, but they can't. Not to mention they could probably also use a caretaker. Or just have all these constables help out an extra 20 build, per extra 20 build power pushing into this factory. That would spend all the money. I don't get all the metal used. That being said, Steel Blue is still not doing terrible. Like, they're doing okay. They're not doing great. They're not able to really expand, and they did seed their low expansion to 400. But at the same time, what expansions that they have are not bad for defense, for, for being defended. Like, they are reasonably solid expansions. There are just not many of them. And Steel Blue is falling behind economically rapidly, and that's a bit of a problem. Like, 400 right now with 40 metal per second, the only downside being they don't have enough to actually use it and they're moving the welders away why are you moving the welders away now like now of all times when you're accessing metal okay there we go still 400 accessing metal here that's a bit of a bit of room for steel blue but not much i mean steel blue yeah at this point they're using about as much production as 400 but only for the next few seconds although that should might be enough Wait, Constable Moderator? Really? I think people in, people in chat were saying that Steel Blue is memeing. I think they have a point. Like, the sheer number of Constables here is honestly a little ridiculous. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of agreeing with the memeing here. I would expect, like, Pyro Moderator, that would be what I would think. Like, Pyro would help get rid of the Fleas, and Moderator would help get rid of Recluses. I wouldn't necessarily expect this. But apparently that's exactly what Steel Blue's doing. Not sure why, but that's the choice they made. Okay then. At the very least, their machine gun commander is able to take out the Western Western Plateau expansion, so there you go. That's something. And hey, with all the constables up front, at least, you know, there's ways of getting radar and seeing what's happening. But, yeah, this is a little bit... Well, actually, it's kind of surprisingly effective. Moderators, there need to be more moderators for this to actually be useful, to slow down and get rid of these lotuses, but this isn't bad, actually. There just needs to be pyros or something like that in order to actually fight off all these forces that are, you know, in between the moderator reload time so that stuff can get killed. Because the moderators deal plenty of damage, it's just a matter of their reload time is very long. But now apparently we're going to be getting a lot of constables and a lot of pickets and a lot of 400 being raided essentially by constables and pickets. But this is why you want pyros. These moderators are not long for this world thanks to the fleas. All these moderators are dead. The constables would have been of some help, but not much. So no, that's that is how much like moderators are 240 each. That's a that's almost 1500 metal worth of moderators just thrown away because of like 200 metal worth of fleas. Well, 400 got their value. I mean, they got double the attrition of Steel Blue right now, so... Kinda know why. At the same time, Firewalker coming in here. I mean, Pyro, Firewalker, kinda similar. Burning it, not quite the same. I don't know. So, at this point, it is going to be a bit of a problem, and... Yeah. 400 really could just take this at this point. 400 has a reasonably strong economy, reasonably strong military, has been quite efficient, and now getting in the air switch when there's not much in the way of anti-air to deal with it. Nah, Steel Blue, other than the reclaim, doesn't really have much. And they don't have much reclaim. Although, admittedly, getting that lower expansion is still pretty good stuff. Yeah, I'm... 
I'm kind of seeing that too. I just don't like stopping stuff in between, but at the same time, people are pointing out that there's a Randy versus Goldie game. And it's like, I should be casting that, but the way the scheduling tends to work, I don't know when things are done. And this was here right now. I don't like waiting, but yeah, that would have been a good thing. I'll actually check what is coming up later. Oh no, it's Goda and Kingstead. What are you talking about? Not Randy versus Goda. Oh, Randy versus Drone. Randy versus Drone. That's what it is. My bad. Yeah, I just don't like... And I don't want to stop in the middle. That's the one thing. I feel bad about that. Eh... I mean, it's a gimmick match. Great, now I'm just distracted. Okay, fine. Whatever, I'll let, four, I'll let Harvey take care of the other one. Anyway, with... Back to this, though. Steel Blue actually is managing to find a fairly large amount of, of economy. I mean, they did win the first match, so this isn't nothing. It's not like Steel Blue is coming in from a place of disadvantage. But at the same time, 400 is basically ready to turn this into a Game 3 situation. Which I kind of hope won't be as meme-tastic, but we'll see. At any rate, with the Locusts coming in, this is going to be a bit of a problem. Because nothing's going to save the Firewalker right now. So, okay. This Constables will try, for sure. But they won't be enough. In fact, I think this is going to be it. 400 looks like they're going to be taking the game right now. And that will be likely that. The Stinger's trying to do its best. We should see some Razors coming up fairly shortly, but... No, at the same time, Thug right back coming over the south side of the map. That will be it. That will finish it. The Pyros... Pyros are trying. Pyros are certainly doing their job. I mean, finally we get Pyros, but a little bit late, honestly. The, their Hermits will just get through them, no problem. The Locusts, no. The Locusts are going to die here, because Pyros are Riot units, and generally speaking, Locusts do lose to Riot units. Blo Pyros, Reavers, whatever. Locusts will die. At the same time, still blue going for... They're going for a crow? They're successfully going for a crow? Like, this is actually not a bad build time for a crow. For the fact that there's hermits right at their doorstep. But, really? A crow? Now? It's a... I mean... Uh, metal's not that tight, but I don't know. I think it's a little bit too risky. If 400 saw that crow, then it's over. 400 knows that they can just wait, rush in, maybe throw in a few tridents of their own. Heck, 400 already has their own crow coming up, so why not? They just build their own crow first. I mean, 400's got three times the metal. They might as well. And yeah, that, that looks like this is going to be it. This crow will come out, and that's going to seal it. Did I say thug? Oh, yeah. I meant hermit. I meant hermit. Spider thug. The shield thug and spider thug. They're all thugs. And yeah, Constable is basically no damage. If you have enough of them, you can stop Fleas, but that's it. That's kind of the point. Like, stopping small- or slowing down small raiders. I think it really is just largely stopping Fleas. Like, for any other matchup, I can't imagine how it's actually going to affect anything. But for Fleas, it kills them. I mean, you know, assuming that there's actually any Constables there, and the Fleas don't just get have a field day against a Stinger. And die because the Stinger dies. Seriously, people, fight move! Fight move for your fleas. Please fight move your fleas in the future. They save... They don't die if you fight move them. They end up just out of the range. Or just at the edge of their range. Which, for most things, is outside of the kill range. Stingers included. Metal Extractors being the big one, though. Because Metal Extractors... Like... It's so easy to be outside of the kill range. But it's so easy to get into the kill range. Fight move puts them outside the kill range. Or the death range. The death explosion range. Well, notice that I'm Steel Blue trying to go for the Constable push. I mean, it's got defenses behind it. It's something. The Fleas can't stop it. I don't really see how much it's going to accomplish because, again, there is a Crow and a bunch of Hermits and not much else from Steel Blue's side to actually help defend the ground. So this is kind of it. I mean, the Hermits are going to come in here. They're not going to have an easy time. The Stinger will actually stop them. And This is, this is a job for Recluses or Crabs. Crabs work too. But I'm guessing we'll see a GG once the crow comes over the horizon. And... Well, if we don't see a GG, it'll be forced. Because I don't think Steel Blue's got anything else. 
Ah, there it is. Steel Blue throws in the towel. We have a game three. After this meme-tastic little game, I just don't even... I mean, at least it was, it was a short and sweet meme-tastic game. It wasn't drawn out, which meme-tastic games can be sometimes. But nope, that was a fairly reasonably paced meme-tastic game. So back to the brackets while we wait for the next game to start. We do have a... Like I said before... Oh, my bad. Let's get this properly lined up. We do have... Randy and Drone going on. Again, whoever wins 400 Steel Blue is going to be moving on, but I don't know who that's going to be. And... Because again, like, Steel Blue and 400, they're, they're even. So from the third map, I'm not really sure what we're going to see. It looks like... Sheesh, if 400 wants to win... Sorry, 400 won. If Steel Blue wants to win, I don't want Spiders to deal with. I guess they could go for, like, Tangled Dismuth? Or Finn's Revenge? I feel like these are the maps that are... I haven't seen the maps in forever. For good reason, too. Oh! Google Frog, you got knocked out. Oh, okay. Apparently Google Frog got knocked out. Okay, let's check the tournament results again. Yeah, Kingstead beat Google Frog. Two... Uh, Wow! Kind of sad that that game had some issues, technically, because that Kingstead beating Google Frog, that's surprising. I mean, Kingstead's a great player, it's just still. Like, but yeah, don't, get, don't get me wrong, Kingstead's a really good player. Alright, let's get Google Frog on here. So, yeah, we're gonna be. All right, so it looks like... Okay, so Matt got stuff to work. That's good. Hey, Google Frog, how's it going? Hi. Is my fan uh, a bit too loud? No, I don't hear it at all. How's it going? Oh, you're... Not sure Everything fine? Yep. Okay. Alright. We are into the game, though, so let's just get that started. Oh, this is game three, two. And we are going to be on Alien Desert. Alright, let's go! Ow, darn it. Alright, there we go. Yeah, starting out, we have light vehicles for Steel Blue. 400 is going for light vehicles as well. Or rovers. Rovers! They're called rovers now. 400 yeah. starting off with a fencer rush. Oh, yeah, that, that push. Mobile picket push. You don't see that very often yeah, these days. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's, it, it's just me, or is it usually just Dart Scorcher now? Like, mobile... The fencer stuff was a thing I remember seeing months ago, but it seemed to have fallen out of favor once Darts got buffed. There's sort of a timing. He's trying to avoid making any static defenses. Just making yep. fences instead. Yeah. And then you push forward with the fences at some point, whereas Steel Blue is making turrets. Yeah, well, you're probably watching the last game where Steel Blue is making loads and loads of lotuses all over the place. Clearly well, in anticipation that of fleas. Would be good for Fencer. <laughs> That's true, actually. Fencers do not outrange lotuses, so it is, it is an option. And now that Steel Blue is aware of that, we're probably going to see more Lotuses coming up. And indeed we do. In fact, double Lotus over in the ba back in the main base, and Steel Blue just, with their commander, setting up Lotuses up front. That seems like a mistake, because the fences will just outrange them and kill them. I thought you said... Wait, hang on. Let's double check the range here. Oh yeah, they do outrange Lotuses. What am I saying? Yes, my bad. Sorry, fences are going to be... You're, I, I misinterpreted. I thought you said fences would be countered by Lotus, and I was confused oh, no, trying to justify it. That's good for if your opponent's being... That Starting makes sense, because I was trying to justify what I thought you said, and I was like, no, it doesn't make sense. Fencers would outrange Lotus. Ah, okay. Skirmishes usually do. I was... Sorry, I'm just trying to patter rather than actually think. So, yeah, no, Lotus is... I'm not really sure. I mean, other than Stinger, I'm not really sure what you'd use. Gauss, maybe. Just to stop the Fencers from actually dealing with it with, from a distance. Probably just a few Ravages. Although they're yeah. a bit more expensive. 
or even just scorch. Although, I mean, scorch or dart gets rid of gets rid of defensive. It's just a matter of numbers. Four hundred is attacking a bit too loosely, and might yeah. lose more defenses. Yeah, yeah. The, these scorches would have been dead if the defenses were together, especially if they had focused fire. Yeah, That's a bit of a mistake you can make pretty easily, and I I mean I don't have so much of a mistake. Steel Blue did a really good job of taking into account how four hundred had lined up their forces and just crossed the T on that. Like, that was just a good tactics of Steel Blue. The radar's right there. They know but exactly they where four forces are. Together, those two scorches probably did nothing. Oh yeah, I'm sure. But hey, Steel Blue saw an opportunity and took advantage of it. So good job them. Four hundred clearly switching off from that. They're they're going pure scorcher themselves. That's. I think they've realized. Okay, the timing is over for the defensor push. Let's move on to the standard play. It's sort of even, except Steel Blue has a lot more map control. But apart from that... That's a little tricky. I think I agree that Steel Blue has more map control in the center, but at the same time, it feels like 400... They're in a position where they can easily start harassing out. I mean, okay, the Lotuses are going to stop the Scorchers, but at this point, it feels almost like so Steel Blue's a little bit stretched. See, the top 400. Yeah. Yeah, the Scorchers but are coming those two here. Lotuses are pretty good still. Well, what I'm thinking is that if 400 finds any expansions or finds this mason going forward and takes that out, that is still a huge blow to Steel Blue's economy. And that's yeah, that, that is a mission good. success right there. Back Steel Blue, pay attention, pay attention! No! No! How did that Okay, it's going back. We we'll get some harassment in. The Lotus is surprisingly not able to defend. At least not all okay. Able to defend well they did enough. Their job. They did their job. You're right. The Dark got in there and saved the day. Only one mech's lost. That's actually not a big deal. But the Mason being killed, that is huge. Steel Blue's going to have, like, they're going to be a minute behind in economic development. 400 is going to be able to get ahead by 10 metal per second, no problem. Or at least in theory. If they start expanding along the eastern side of the map, I could see them getting ahead quite a bit. Things I don't see 400 being able to afford that with all the Scorch pressure and the, even the Stinger coming up in the middle. That's actually a fair point. Yeah, because that I think they're going for a death push. I agree. The one thing, I, Steel Blue does feel a little bit stretched, but 400, you're right, they don't really have the army to punish that stretch. Like, they, the fencers are kind of getting in here. They could help against this, these Lotuses. And there are rippers in place to stop all the Scorches and, and Darts from being able to go ha go wild. But at the same time, <clears throat> again, 400 is spreading their forces quite thin. They're trying to get their slow force in to damage Steel Blue, or maybe even to just give them room to expand because as Steel Blue responds with their army and that's exact you're exactly right 400 sending a commander and a mason over to the southeast side of the map basically blocked by the ripper the ripper fencer mix because i guess they figure well steel blue's not going to try to go through that so it creates a soft wall oh but the rippers are Hello. behind the fencers oh this is terrible oh man no foreigners lost this they, they have no protection of their expansion anymore those fencers just not in the right position at all the commander's basically dead. 400 wisely it pushing it out of the way, hide. but this is... Uh, yeah, it can, it can run away, but that's all it can really do. The expansion is... The expansion attempts are over. Steel Blue should be able to get rid of everything 400 has built up, but not going for it. Instead, responding to the pressure over to the front lines. Good peel by, by 400. Or at least partially good peel. I mean, still some Scorch is getting down here. Steel Blue's splitting up to deal with this, but... Okay, no, this is still going to be enough. 400 losing their entire front line force. I don't think... 400 really can build any more. Like, at this point, they, I don't see them being able to get enough of an army quickly enough to actually answer what Steel Blue has. I get for, Yeah, I get Steel the Blue just gets to expand. On yeah. The top, on the bottom. I mean, Steel Blue isn't really going for it. That's the one thing. If Steel Blue were to go for it, I could see this working out, but Steel Blue just seems to be trying to push and push and push and hope for the best and get a kill. I'm not sure that's actually going to pan out. Like if no, I think he's playing it safe. It's he's doing it slowly but safely. Hmm. We'll see about that. I'm I'm a little I'm unsure, but I can see what you mean. I think 400 though. Four, oh no, those are the commander. No, oh, that's that is a shame. That's that is the southern expansion basically done with. So the only thing now is whether or not 400 can just slowly push back against Steel Blue. They have managed to take out some of the stuff on the north side of the map, so there's something. But still, I don't know. Sorry, it's 400. 400 lost their expansions over the north side of the map. My bad. 
So yeah, Steel Blue is not not looking too weak right now. They're yeah, 400 doesn't really have much of an army. They don't have the economy to build up an army. They got a quick storage up, so at least they made up for the lack of commander pretty quick. But I don't know. But There's double one income, something... it's pretty much over. Yeah, it is. The double income on top of the army advantage difference. The Ripper is doing a valiant job trying to get through here and take out some of the expansions and turn that around. But there are too many Scorchers. One Ripper cannot deal with four Scorchers. Two Rippers, yeah, two Rippers have no problem. But one Ripper, nope. That's, that is game, right there. The loss of that Ripper. It's kind of a shame, too. I, I see what Steel Blue is doing. They're trying to get some kind of pressure around the map. So that, Sorry, 400. They're trying to get some pressure around the map so that Steel Blue has to be pushed around and can't focus their for army in any one spot. But 400 is losing so many forces in the process of doing that that it's not really paying off. Yeah, they were fighting small, hopefully efficient forces into larger mobile forces. Exactly, and but I mean, it works it takes very a lot, of, a lot of good placement to do that with Fencer and Ripper. And on this map, that's kind of hard to do, especially since I don't think 400 has much in the way of radar. No, 400 does not have radar coverage. Like, their main base has some. The rest of the map is completely blind. So 400 is basically well, they probably guessing. did earlier. Yeah, but right when that last Ripper was going around and these Ravagers going around on the south side of the map, this is done blind. 400 is just guessing as to what Steel Blue has and where they have it. Steel Blue, on the other hand, has full knowledge. Like, Steel Blue has basically full radar coverage. So, 400 is playing with less of an economy, a smaller army, and no information. Well, then now they are sort of fiddling around. I think Steel Blue could even just die off the base. I'm not entirely oh, totally. sure. No, they've got, it looks like about 10 Scorchers right here. Yeah, 11 Scorchers on top of a few darts. Two Rippers won't be able to deal with that effectively enough. And honestly, the Rippers are so out of position right now that the Scorchers could just... They could, they could go around, rotate around the north side of the map and run right into the base, and that'd be it. That'd be game. These Rippers are not a threat if they're left alone. Yeah, 400 tapping on while a Steel Blue consolidates. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be... It's just a matter of Steel Blue playing it safe, like I said earlier. Getting everything set up for a push. 400 really likes the sneaky edge of the map. Yeah, right. they did a lot. They did it in Ravage too. It, it it worked in Ravage, but that's because they had a stronger economy. As it is now, I don't really know what it's going to accomplish other than letting Steel Blue know. Because Steel Blue is already prepared for that. They've they've spread out their forces perfectly to make sure they know when 400 is going for a sneaky attack like that. Well, and they know, but they actually haven't acted go. on it. That's fair. That's actually a really good point. We don't see a whole lot in the way of defenses. Actually, the, why are the crashes going up north? I don't get this. Crasher on Reed. There's no air being built up for 400, so pure guess from Steel Blue. And a bit of a bad guess at Actually, that. Actually, if 400 killed off, say, the fusion reactor in its factory, but not even then. That's not happening. Well, maybe right. then. Yeah, not happening now that the army's responded. Yeah, Steel Blue, I guess, wasn't worried because they have so much in the way of production capacity. They didn't have to move back their frontline forces, which admittedly they did. They just had to build a new force in the back line. And have the time to do it. And that's exactly what I think this will be game. Uh, it looks like that was 400's last ditch. And that should be it. 400 did use that as yeah, a way of expanding. Yeah, it would have been better to split his forces. Splitting his forces would have been good. <laughs> yeah, overreacted. I, shame and said. I agree. I just think, it, like, I'm looking at it, though, like, how could... Split forces between what, though? 400 doesn't have much in the way of a front line to split between. Like, yeah, okay. Or pull half back the army kills forces. his base. Oh, you mean Steel Blue Half could have gone and killed the base? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's that would make a lot of sense because Steel Blue built up enough of an army they could just easily take that. I don't like Steel Blue. They got seventy metal per second. They can put into a factory. They're they're good. They're good for building up a flash defense force. And yeah, well, okay. Now these rippers are down. I'm guessing that'll be enough confidence. Like. Steel blue, you can you can just run, you can go in, you, you can kill things, you can you can win. He started you can pumping right ravages, now. which should end it. Oh, totally. The the rippers will have no chance against those. So yeah, at this point, Steel Blue should be able to take it. I mean, they have four times the economy. Just go for the kill. There it is. Okay, south side of the map, we do have a bunch of scorchers coming in for the kill. Nope, they're stopping. Darn it, Steel Blue, stop making my commentary wrong. Just win. 
Quit dawdling and win. <laughs> like, 400 is clearly trying. I mean, they have to. 400, if they lose this, they're out of the tournament. So, their desperation makes a lot of sense. But at the same time, there isn't the economy there to actually play on that. And there we go. 400 throws the towel. Steel Blue takes the game and moves on to fight Wesley. And if you look at the actual brackets, it is going to be, from the looks of it, no real change otherwise. Everyone else, Pet Turtle and Anarchy apparently still going. As are Team Onida. Really? I think there might be some something going on with the Team Onida match. What is going on with that? Can I find that? We have... Yeah, it's um, Game 8. Game eight. Um, some people are already on to round two. Yeah. There's um, Gotti and Kingstad. Yeah, Gotti and Kingstad, I think, are halfway through their game. Thing in One's nine minutes, one's 16 minutes. So. Yeah. I'm oh, still in game one, though. Interesting. Oh, one of them's on game two. All right, well, I'm going to just go to a small break before finding the next, or at least... Go to a small break, I think, briefly, unless there's an immediately a match I can just jump into. Which there might be. I don't know. Let's see. That's game two. All right, so I'll be back in a sec. Who's in match three? Okay, Shaman's match pointing three. at something. Yeah, they were in match three. All right, so I'll be back in a sec.